you've caught him. Yeah. I mean, you know him. We all know how great he is in Jacob DeGrom, but he, he's, he's been nicked up a little bit his last couple of starts. So when you look at tape and film from DeGrom, what do you see? Well, look, when I'm trying to diagnose what Jake has going on and whether or not he's right or wrong, I'm, it's all about the finish because he's so mechanical. Everything he does, all the uptick in velocity, everything that we've seen the last couple of years, a lot of that, we're going to head out to the mound here, but a lot of that has come via him working on his mechanics that and making sure that he can basically get everything out of that long, lean frame that he uses so well. Here you see it in this A's game, early in the game, he's throwing some pitches down, down in the zone, out of the zone. There you see him kind of fall off to the left. That's the kind of stuff I'm looking for. That's when I know, okay, he's not feeling quite right. He's not feeling quite like himself. He, he, might, he might have some things to, adjustments to make today. And when it's your 10th, 11th start of the year, and you're coming off of a, a one-year injury, over a one-year injury, where yep, you didn't yep. pitch at all in the big leagues, that's so important. Now, obviously, he had some frustration because he's a competitor. And he's, stay, he's saying to Angel there, those balls aren't down, those balls aren't down. Well, they were. And he went back and looked at the film, and he saw it. They were down. Well, he just had trouble locating all day because his mechanics weren't quite right. And a guy like him normally can make that adjustment quickly. But like I said, when it's your 10th, 11th start of the year, you're still in, you're still going through spring training into April, and you're still making adjustments on the year. He's doing it right now in September. So realistically, he's trying to catch up, and he just hasn't quite found it. Then you take into, effect, into account the fact that this A's team, they're young. And the one thing that they can do, you get called to the big leagues, you better be able to hit a fastball. You got to hit a fastball. You know what? They can hit fastballs. If you give them an opportunity to square up a fastball or sit fastball, which they did this entire game, you can tell they were sitting fastball the entire game. Didn't swing and miss one Jacob deGrom heater. Mm. This team was locked in. Then you make adjustments when you need to. Certain situations, okay, I get a good breaking ball or a breaking ball I can handle. I'm going to do damage. But for the most part, they were locked in on that fastball. It put them on the right timing, and they did a really nice job of coming through and obviously putting up some runs on a guy who doesn't normally give up runs. Yeah, I, I felt like when I'm looking at that, that video, which you did an amazing job with, it was the soft sliders, right? Yep. It, it just felt like these sliders were kind of lazy sliders where it's it's get me over slider, especially in good counts. I also felt like, man, they were just crushing heaters. Yep. And, and you've seen the ground when he's really, really good. He's got zip on his fastball and he's got sharpness with his slider, unhittable kind of to hit. My question is, if you fix that, how do you attack these Braves hitter? Because okay. all these guys right now, yeah. they're as hot as it gets. Yes. If it's 2 o'clock and it's you and DeGrom, how do you go about that business? Well, what's, what's fun is, I mean, some of these guys have some history with DeGrom. Well, and let's and show, that, first of all, let's show the lineup here for the Braves real okay. quick as you guys are discussing that here. And look, I mean, yeah, they got history. And these top four guys, uh, they're, they're bad boys. I mean, Acuna Jr. has been heating up as of late. Swanson's had a great year. Michael Harris the second. That kind of culminated with when the Braves took off. That's that culminated with him getting called up. Austin Riley and Matt Olson, they kind of got to tick it back up again. But I'll let you guys pick yeah. up what you're talking about. That's, that's my player. biggest thing is, is figuring out how do you do this? Who do you go after? Who do you circle around and say, hey, this guy can't beat me when the score is one nothing, Or even if the score is 5 nothing, I'll go and attack that guy. Yeah. How do you do that? How do you go about that business? Or is it more an in-game adjustments? Because I've seen DeGrom. He, he, he looks like he's more of a quiet guy. Yeah. But when things kind of get a little bit rattled in there, he'll fix it in the dugout. Does he that's do that? That's exactly what he is. He is the type of guy that will go into a game plan knowing what his strengths are, and that's typically what he'll utilize when it comes to facing certain hitters and how he's going to attack them. Yeah. So when you look at the top of this order, and of course you've got Acuna leading off, they've got some history together. He knows what he's done before with Acuna, and a lot of the time he likes to attack him with heaters. He likes to live up with heaters. And early in the game, he'll typically go one, two pitches as long as he can into a game until he sees that other team and those hitters start to make adjustments. Yeah. That's when he might introduce a third pitch, whether it's no. the slider or the changeup, vice versa. That's when he'll go to third pitch. We've seen him use the curveball a little bit more this mm. year, which I really like, which can really help him get ahead of some of these hitters and use it at different times. Let me times. ask you this, because Acuna is hitting over 340 on that slider. Yep. Is that something that DeGrom is aware of? Or he's 100%. saying, I don't respect no hitter. <laughs> yeah. I'm Jacob DeGrom. Here you go, buddy. See if you can hit it. No, what I like is Jake will take into effect, obviously, what he's seen in the past. He'll take Take these last couple outings, whatever he's seen against a certain guy, he'll use that the next time out. But to me, with Acuna, he's had success.
success. Like you said, that slider's giving him some trouble. He knows he's had success with that heater. He's going to go to it. Until he sees Acuna make an adjustment, I don't expect to, to, for him to see anything off speed. Until he starts cheating, until he gets out in front of something, takes a huge hack, and it, you can tell he might be on it, but he's going to have to do some damage on that heater before – Jake comes off it because I, I mean I, we've seen in the playoffs. Yeah, teams that's do what I was that. about to say. They go to one pitch until you make the adjustment, then they'll come off of that. And Jake's great in the dugout, great at conversation. I, great I, at conversation. I, I think as much as DeGrom is so good as well, the one guy that I'm leaning towards is Austin Riley. Yep. And I know last year, you know, he had those MVP numbers. Mm -hmm. This year's a little bit less, but it's kind of that that scene. He's done it. He's been here before. He knows what he expects from Jacob DeGrom. I think if there's a guy that you need to circle and highlight and say, he can't beat us when the score is one nothing, or if we're up one nothing, yeah. or we're down one nothing. He is the guy that you got to go after. I think he's kind of that catalyst. If everybody else goes, it's because this guy is going. He's driving people in. And I think with Jacob DeGrom, He's got his hands full, man. He's got Harris, Acuna, Swanson, Austin Riley, Matt Olson yeah. now getting hot at the right time. Whew. Well, that's the thing. With They moved Harris up in the lineup now. Now he's towards the top of that lineup. It gives you another guy to worry about as far as getting on base for a guy like Austin Riley. You've also got Dansby Swanson up there in the two-hole. That guy's had an incredible year. There are no weaknesses, and this, this is a very long Atlanta lineup when you're trying to game plan against it. So realistically, it's going to come down to Jake taking what he does best, whatever that first game plan is. And I think Acuna, he's going to attack him with heaters. You know, then, then as you move down the lineup, whether it's Harris, whether it's Riley, whether it's Olsen, you get down that lineup, and it's going to be, okay, what are we going to start with? And then what's your go-to? How do we get onto that? The one thing is we got to make sure for Jacob deGrom is, am, is he right when the game starts? That's going to be the key. So you, wanna, you really want to focus on, is he falling off the mound? Does is he, is, is he have that little bit of, in his landing, is there a little bit of off balance? That's when I know his mechanics aren't quite right. Because when he's right, you've seen it, it's effortless. It's <laughs> yeah. effortless. That's Silky. when you get the, that's when you get the yeah, velocity. Right. Exactly. Silky. 101, 102, oh, slider is nasty, <laughs> sharp. I, I, I felt like with Grom, as soon as I would like, see him start throwing long toss, you knew he either had it or he didn't. Mm, okay. I mean, because he's he's 180 yards away and he's launching the ball and it's right there. Toosh. Yep. He's not missing here. He's not missing there. Right. And that's he's, something he's, he's had from day feet, one. He's 120 yep. feet away and he's slinging it. And I'm telling you, man, it was boom, 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 playing catch, playing long toss, but with accuracy, that's when you know he's we're, right. We're, real quick, we're gonna move on. But real quick, uh, some people will look at the ground last couple starts and say, oh, you know, he's he's coming off of you know the shoulder injury, or whatever yeah. it is. Maybe there's some arm fatigue. You say that's not the case. I don't think so. No, just from what I've seen, I'm seeing some mechanical issues. Okay. And that's something that, like I said earlier, he's basically in his April, if you will, because he had spring training. He kind of ramped up as, as well as he could before he got to big league games. But realistically, yeah. that was when he started ramping up. Yeah. So the, his first few starts were spring training. Then he's, but now he's in April. Now he's, and he's going through that first little bit of, okay, trying to make adjustments, figure out who I'm going to be for the rest of the year. You don't see those dominant pitchers really become dominant until May and June when they've had enough you know, repetitions under their belt. Obviously, a guy like DeGrom's been around long enough. Okay. He's got him that he can make those adjustments a little bit faster than a young guy will. Similar a la like a Clayton Kershaw comes back, and he's himself right away. Justin Verlander has all that success this year coming off of two years off because he's had all those repetitions in the past. So, to me, it's not necessarily an arm fatigue or he's okay. tired or Brand. there's an injury. All Last about just finding out. those mechanics. Five innings, 12 punches. When, yeah, you yeah. when, when, you're, yeah. when you're a guy that can do it against a team, like if you're a hitter and you know that you're going three for four and you're you're yep. gonna you know I'm not leaving home without one, you're right? <laughs> I'm gonna get my one or my two. Degrom has that with the break.